<coughs> Hi there Vinyl Community, it's Martin here uh, with a sort of uh, parody video I suppose you would say where behold a wall and some floor and um, it just makes me laugh when people make these videos it's fine if people want to make these videos but um, yeah in another way you can't really see who the person is I am cheating here because I'm showing my face of course so uh, on with oh on the floor this video we shall go okay so it's just a mixture of some things that I've been playing lately or found um, and then a secret uh, ending with something which I will explain when uh, they come up anyway this album I got at the weekend, uh, I ordered it um, on uh, the internet. Yeah, in fact it was via eBay, it was a seller. And this is uh, Goretzky's third um, symphony, uh, but interpreted by, I think he's a jazz saxophonist from America called Colin Stetson. And it's, um, as I say, Goretzky's number three. A reimagining um, of that particular piece, and I heard it somewhere and it grabbed my attention because it was sufficiently different from the original to warrant um, a purchase. And yeah, it's great. I mean, I'm so familiar with the original anyway, um, which I've only actually got on CD, it's not even the Dawn Upshaw version, but. It's just a piece of music that I would encourage anybody or everybody to try. Um, it's a double. And, um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, there we go. I'll put that there, as people do in these sort of videos. And this partly I got for my wife, but also I, I, I was at a record fair last, a week last Sunday. And uh, this was available for 10 quid. I swapped some um, Talking Heads albums, actually, with who I'm not really into Talking Heads, um, apart from maybe the Psycho Killer track. Anyway, this is a film, good film, an interesting soundtrack. It's on blue vinyl. Actually, you know what? I think maybe I should even I should even show it like people do in these sort of uh, videos. There it is, a lovely blue vinyl. Really hurting my elbow at the moment, leaning on it. Um, so, happy with that. There, pop that over there. I just realised that every time I remove this album, unless I keep it here, um, you can see what the next thing is. So, here is the largest forehead in pop, Jimmy Somerville. I'm sure you could, uh, you could land a small uh, space shuttle on that forehead. Anyway, this is his greatest hits with uh, Communards and Romsky beat added and it's got obviously Small Town Boy on it and Don't Leave Me This Way and um, I Feel Love, Johnny Remember Me and what other is it? Good? Oh, So Cold Tonight is a very good track as well. So that I found for a pound somewhere. Might have showed it already. Can't remember. Moving on. Uh, as a football Arsenal supporter, uh, the uh, Tottenham uh, duo, Chas and Dave, I think they did four Tottenham records. Um, uh, of which three finals they won. I particularly like this album. It doesn't have any Tottenham records on it, but it does have Snooker Loopy. And it has Ain't No Pleasing You, which I particularly like. Some Serge Gainsbourg. This one here called uh, La Chanson de Prévert. And he is. <clears throat> now, this album, this is very. Uh, some, a mate gave this to me because he was in the band uh, before they recorded the album. He was a bass player. And. Um, it's from 1991. Uh, I know very little about the band apart from I played it and really liked it. It's definitely of that 
ilk, elk of um, Sisters of Mercy, the cult. And as you can see, it's uh, produced by this guy here. And um, yeah, it's pretty good, really, to be honest. Never heard of them at all, ever. Okay, have a lovely uh, £1 find here from last week, I think. Neil Sh Nielsen Schmielsen. And it's, uh, although it's thin, I love the sound of flexi, uh, not flexi disc, I love the sound of Dynaflex this time of the morning. Um, not really into Nielsen, but um, listen to it, listen to all these albums, and uh, didn't actually mind it too much, really. Pop that one back in there. I hope this video isn't going to be too long. Uh, oops, another one pound find coming up with Paul Jones in it. Now, this sort of pub blues rock, I don't tend to like. It all sounds the same, but this particular album I thought was pretty good and it cost me a quid. Yeah, if I was to see a band in a pub doing the predictable cover versions and um, such like. It would not be my sort of thing. Um, but this, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, this, I amazingly found the other week an upgrade copy for my pretty decent condition, um, Mama Said Lenny Cravat's um, album. The other copy I had had sort of like a wearing up here. In fact, it was probably even from when I bought it originally as that was sometimes the case with their records um, but this is better I played it and it's a pretty good album actually I don't have the first album I recently heard I think Dr Rhythm was talking about it um, and that is generally the uh, Let Love Rule album the well not the trendy album to get but the uh, I suppose you would say more funk soul based um, debut that he put out um, but there's some pretty tasty tracks still on this album anyway as well as uh, hits and everything okay it's a yodeling priest um, from the 60s Paul Quinlan um, got a nice explanation of everything on the back from um, his his um, I guess well, another Jesuit, I think, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty good. All on, all about all psalms, basically, reinterpreted. Ah, my wife liked this album. Um, don't think she's ever heard it before. Faith No More, The Real Thing. This is my original copy of it. Maybe it's not a first pressing or anything, but... What the heck? Okay. This is some uh, <coughs> particular church music. Um, I actually also have an album on uh, the same label. It's called uh, White Spirituals. Yeah, this is a uh, yes, yeah, an Alan Lomax one, of course. Yeah, yeah, it was all a bit manky and sticky down here. I taped it up actually. Uh, Thought I'd give this album a go. Um, somebody told me uh, that this is actually, or was, one of um, uh, Brian Ferry's girlfriends. And this is the album cover, which I think I've already st already stated once before. Mr. All of Fame is freaked out by. Um, I think it's a really nice cover. The album, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I get it. I think I get it anyway. And uh, something that uh, Derek um, would be an advocate of, I think it was him that showed this recently. I was uh, laying down on, on, I was laying down on this very floor here, and I really got into this. Closed my eyes, maybe nodded off once or twice. Um, this is a repress, I think. Superior Viaduct, 2014. Uh, original 68 on Impulse Records. Yeah. And something else I played recently, UFO. Um, 
maybe not so much to say about that, but um, here we go. On my, um, sorry, on our radio show, uh, we played this and we jumped around. House of Pain. Don't remember which one it was we played. The one that sounded as close to a single, I think. Oh, now. It was at a record fair last Sunday selling, and um, somebody paid uh, 60 pounds for this. And when I looked at it, there was a couple of big scratches on it. But apparently they're happy with it. I was talking to another seller there on that same day. They had a copy for 20 quid. I don't know how collectible this is. I guess it goes for quite a good price now. But it's a great album. I mean, it's sort of concept journey type album um yeah it's just something different you know it's little adverts and it's little um vignettes um particularly the song about potholes in my lawn i think the last one i love uh this is um youtube negative land if you don't know it um youtube it if you know if you remember casey Kasem. He's on uh, one of the tracks. Right. So. We are at. What are we at? 11 minutes. Okay. Right. I've done some album reviews. <coughs> which I've written. Which I'm thinking about putting on a blog. So. Um, I'll do them. See what you think. Pardon me. Okay. Here's the first one. Uh, Postman Pat. Songs and Music from the television series. I do not remember getting into Pat, which is strange as I was at the right age of primary school when the original series was made back in 82. So maybe it was, as can be the case in liking kids TV programmes when you are way too old, be it a stoned student or an agreeable grandparent or parent. So Pat is a friendly enough postman who has British Prince Charles uh, ears with uh, a long face and a big nose. He doesn't have nostrils as well, which I find slightly disturbing. Anyway, uh, he's a good worker and can get sidetracked with his cat, Jess, the brains behind this operation. Pat later becomes married, has his own kids, and then latterly becomes totally unrealistic and uh, politically correct with AJ, a small train line uh, driver that would have been axed um, with the Beecham Report of 1963. Also, I've seen a helicopter, which, just in my mind, it ain't going to happen. Anyway, um, the original series and its music go hand in hand. There's a few lovely instrumentals, slower than Pat's at times, haphazard driving. There's a the theme tune based around the TV series, uh, which is a simplistic idea of delivering the post in adverse British weather conditions. Handyman Ted Glenn has his own upbeat ditty here entitled Leave It To Me, uh, while Sam's mobile shop visits the valley twice a week in a slower pace number. One question always remains in my mind, and that's about the Reverend Tims. Where did he stand on such controversial hot potato issues as same-sex marriage, abortions or the war on terror right the next album is uh, music inspired by the life and times of Scrooge McDuck written and produced by Thomas Holopainen which I've talked about I think or sh certainly shown um, before anyway okay <clears throat> there are many books that become films I hope this will never become one to create a soundtrack without the constraints of a modern picture paints a very different picture to me and allows more freedom in one's mind, uh, much as a literal written page one is reading. True, I hear you say, it came from a comic book. How childish, yes, but one with a modern fable and lesson in life for all ages of biblical proportions. Hoarding money is bad. For the composer here, Maybe a familiar northern European fairy tale, Pieni Kulta, in Finnish, translates something like uh, The Luck of the Pool. Uh, but that's what I've seen um, elsewhere. Uh, it was inspired um, by the McDuck tightness of wallet. 
if you need visuals for that, um, you can go to the cinematic version of Prince Caspian, um, where C.S. Lewis would have taken that legend and plonked it into Narnia. That's the luck of the pool. Um, there's a particular scene in the uh, film where um, they put the put the things in and they turn to gold, and then there's that danger that they're going to turn into gold as well. Anyway, Polypinon, him out of Nightwish, widens his CV, CV here to one of classical composer's proportions as the short symphony soars, swoops and floats for roadkill like a red kite bird of prey starving for a snack. Standout track for me is Cold Heart of Klondike, enlisting vocal assistance from fellow Finn and metal demigod Tommy Kakko, him out of Sonata Arctica, belting out a full-lunged effort. There is also, formerly of Iona, now Nightwisher, Troy Dunockley, adding his native Scottish flavour like a very palatable single malt with contributions on the Celtic um, Uleam pipes and Bodrum uh, hand drum with the uh, wooden stick. So all in all, well worth the adventure and available in double vinyl from a Nuclear Blast. It sort of sounds like an advert there, but I suppose that's how I wrote it. I wrote it. Uh, beautiful artwork, drawings from Don Rosa. That's the um, guy that originally did the um, comic book. Um, also, taking into consideration the actual comic book all compiled together, which set you back more than uh, 100 quid, definitely three figures. Okay, uh, we're at 17 minutes. Right, okay. Here's one which I have written a review for, but uh, I think I might leave it, actually. So I've got two versions of it. So this is a normal version of the album. And uh, this is a pitch disc. Okay, right, the last album I'm going to talk about is this one. And as you can um, see here, it's uh, got a price sticker on it which will become relevant when I talk about it. Okay, don't you just hate sticky stickers? This one will probably come up many times in my writings as a record collector, being OCD comes with the territory I guess. Bent sleeves or names like Ian Tracy's record written in permanent ink yonks ago on sleeves really annoys me but sometimes adds um, authenticity to it. What a snob I am. In this instance, I'm quite proud I got this album from Oxfam for £1.29. Rare as well, you may say, as this said charity ch chain tends to overprice irrespective of condition. Um, I hope no one's offended by that. Anyway, um, so I'm happy to leave this one on there. And it's part of the story to tell in that without the often overplayed Don't You Want Me as final track, it just wouldn't be the same without it on there. Uh, I suspect many bands have a big hit that they have to perform relentlessly and talk about in countless interviews and retro documentaries. Even in a parody um, TV advert for which that particular song is used, or overused film placement, I cringe. But within Dare, it has its place alongside all the other lesser hits and more obscure electronica that shows the band's roots. Uh, it also introduces us to Joanne and Susan, whose arrivals were almost uh, prophesied on the cover of this uh, previous album, Reproduction. So, um, oops, I hope you found that interesting uh, video. I guess in most cases uh, you wouldn't have had to have seen me anyway. Um, let me know what you think of those uh, records and then the reviews. Um, if it's um, popular um, or people liked it, click a like or whatever, or even a dislike. And uh, maybe I'll do some more or maybe I will just go back to sitting at the table. So um, thanks for